Hi, this is Dr. Michelle Cotty, and this is a brief introduction to mood stabilizers. The objectives for this lecture are to identify the medications used to treat bipolar disorder, memorize the drugs in each category, and to be able to summarize the adverse effects of each medication. Bipolar disorder is primarily managed with mood stabilizing medications, such as lithium, but it can also be managed using certain anti-epileptic medications, which include valproic acid, also known as Depakote, carbamazepine, which is Tegretol, and Lamictal, which is Lamotrigine. Other medications used to manage bipolar disorder include atypical antipsychotics. These can be useful in early treatment. They help promote sleep and decrease anxiety and agitation. They also demonstrate mood stabilizing properties. Anxiolytics, so clonazepam or clonopin, lorazepam or Ativan can also be useful to help treat acute mania and to manage the psychomotor agitation that we sometimes see with mania. And antidepressants, including Welbutrin or Zoloft can be used during the depressive phase in combination with a mood stabilizer. And of course, we need to be very careful with antidepressants as they can cause mania in some patients and increase risk of suicide if a bipolar individual is not already on a mood stabilizer or antipsychotic. Lithium is a mood stabilizer. It produces a neurochemical change in the brain that includes a serotonin receptor blockade. There's evidence that it also decreases neuronal atrophy and or increases neuronal growth. It's used in the treatment of bipolar disorders it helps control episodes of acute mania and for the prevention of mania or depression. It also decreases suicidal ideation in patients. For patients. Sorry about that, there's a glitch. Lithium is a mood stabilizer. It produces a neurochemical change in the brain that includes a serotonin receptor blockade. There's evidence that it also decreases neuronal atrophy and or increases neuronal growth. It's used in the treatment of bipolar disorders and helps control episodes of acute mania and for the prevention of mania or depression. It also decreases suicidal ideation in patients. Complications or adverse side effects include GI distress, such as nausea, diarrhea, abdominal pain. You can administer the medications with meals or milk to help decrease that. Fine hand tremors can interfere with purposeful motor skills and stress and caffeine can make those worse. A medication called propranolol can help manage that. Also, we like to keep the dose as low as possible, give it in divided doses, or use a long-acting formulation. Hand tremors can also be a sign of lithium toxicity, so we want to make sure we educate the patient on that. Polyuria, a mild thirst, can occur. A potassium-sparing diuretic, such as atolactone, can help manage this. We also want the individual to have enough fluid intake. So two to three liters of fluid per day from beverages or food. Weight gain is a common problem. So the individual needs to have a healthy diet, exercise. We want to measure the client's INO because renal toxicity can be an issue with this medication. Have a baseline BUN and creatinine and monitor kidney function periodically. So we all also obtain the client's baseline T3, T4, and TSH levels prior to starting the treatment and then annually after because a goiter and hypothyroidism can be a problem with long-term lithium use. So hypothyroidism, signs and symptoms, if you remember, you could be cold, have dry skin, decreased heart rate, weight gain, 
And of course, Synthroid's a medication that could help manage that. Brady dysrhythmias, hypotension, and electrolyte imbalances can also occur. For patients who are in lithium, they need to be educated about lithium toxicity. So here you can see the different ranges with the side effects that would be present in each state of toxicity. And as you can see, it progresses to coma and death. So make sure that you look over these and know the signs and symptoms of lithium toxicity. So if we're thinking about the early indications when it's less than 1.5, we would hold the medications, talk to the prescriber, and then administer a new dose based on the serum, lithium, and sodium levels. But as we progress to 1.5 or 2, we may need to excrete some of that medication. And when we get to 2 to 2.5, we might have to give an emetic to alert um, clients so that we can do a gastric lavage. There also be, may be medications that aid in that excretion. And finally, we may end up having to do hemodialysis as we proceed towards a coma. So this is a very, very serious risk of individuals who use lithium. Lithium is a pregnancy risk category D. You do not want to take this medication if you're trying to conceive a child. Um, usually we recommend IUDs to individuals who are on lithium if they're female. We want to discourage breastfeeding and use cautiously in individuals who have renal dysfunction, heart disease, sodium depletion, or dehydration. If a patient is taking a diuretic, we would really want to closely monitor their lithium levels because when sodium is excreted with the use of diuretics, lithium excretion is decreased and that can lead to lithium toxicity. NSAIDs like Motrin or Celebrex can increase renal reabsorption of lithium also causing toxicity. And when used in conjunction with anticholinergics, such as antihistamines or tricyclic antidepressants, the patient may have abdominal discomfort as a result of urinary retention in the, or polyuria. All right, so adverse effects of mood stabilizing anti-epileptic drugs. So carbamazepine is also known as Tegretol and has minimum effect on cognitive functioning, but does have CNS effects. So individuals might have problems with their vision, vertigo, um, unsteady gait, or a headache. And we're going to let the client know that the effects should go away in a few weeks, take the dose at bedtime, and we're going to gradually increase the dose. They may have blood dyscrasia, such as leukopenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia. So we need to watch their baseline CBC and platelets, monitor these, and watch for bruising and bleeding of the gums. Monitor for indications of infection, such as fever or lethargy, and make sure we notify the provider if any of these things are present. We do not want the individual to Take this medication when they're pregnant. Um, Tegretol promotes secretion of ADH, which inhibits water excretion by the kidneys. So for individuals who have heart failure, they're at a higher risk for fluid overload. So you want to watch their serum sodium, monitor the individual for edema, decrease in urine output, and hypertension. Skin disorders, including dermatitis, dermatitis rash or Steven Johnson syndrome can also be problematic. Mild reactions we would just treat with um, an anti-inflammatory or antihistamine. 
we want the individual to wear sunscreen. But Stephen Johnson syndrome is dangerous and deadly, and we'll talk more about that in depth. As the course moves along, um, we would want to stop the medication. Next, let's talk about lamictal or lamotrigine. Individuals may have double or blurred vision, dizziness, headache, nausea, or vomiting. And again, this medication puts patients at risk. I think the risk is like 0.001% for Steven Johnson syndrome. Valproic acid or Depakote can have adverse effects that are GI in nature, so nausea, vomiting, indigestion. Usually um, the enteric coated formulations help reduce those side effects in taking them with food. Hepotoxicity, uh, which we might see signs and symptoms of this anorexia, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, abdominal pain, jaundice. So we want to watch their baseline liver function and monitor every two months during the first six months of treatment. Always administer the lowest effective dose. Pancreatitis could be an issue. So nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, thrombocytopenia, Again, look for bruising, and patients should not take this if they're pregnant. These medications are pregnancy risk category D. They result in birth defects. Um, for individuals who have bone marrow suppression or bleeding disorder, Tegretol is not recommended. And for liver disorders, valproic acid is not recommended. They can make um, birth control ineffective. So not only do they cause birth contract birth defects, but they can make oral contraceptives ineffective. 